Do we rise? We do rise, please. Paul. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So the happiest of St. Patrick's Day to all of you and uh, anybody that is brave enough to listen to our meeting. As, uh, as all, you all know, this is one of my favorite days of the universe, and uh, I enjoy almost always getting to spend it with you guys. I think this is at least my third, if not fourth, public safety meeting with this crew. So it has become a regular transition or tradition, excuse me. So with that, we have a uh, public audience, first and foremost. Uh, I do not believe. Do we have any members of the public, Melissa? No. Nope. And it should be announced that uh, our esteemed colleague, Melissa Appleby, is in charge currently. So the town manager is away on a procedure. So uh, Melissa is in charge. So uh, we intend to take full advantage of, of this, <laughs> rename the priest, uh, have, have um, wonderful agenda items, and give her as much trouble as we can here on the high holiday. So um, we do have some minutes, uh, I believe, uh, for the second set of minutes on February 17th, uh, our colleague Mike Long had sent in some corrections. Um, those corrections were captured via email and will be made, uh, Melissa, right, uh, as part of uh, the updates? Yes. So uh, I had one. Um, sure. I, don't know, I don't know if that was picked up, but in the, uh, let's see, it's the... December 16 minutes, uh, Mark Rudowitz's name was just spelled incorrectly. It was spelled R-U-I-Z. All right. So we will get those corrected. Are there any other changes for the December meeting? My um, name was spelled wrong in the February meeting. <laughs> all right. We'll get to those in a second. Um, <laughs> because Chris is not here, Melissa, we're just going to go ahead and administratively make those changes. But I make that motion. I second that motion. And I approve that motion. So. Update, okay. to update those minutes. Uh, and then, so uh, as Jenna pointed out, we need to get her name updated for the uh, December minutes. And then as Mike had pointed out, we just need to correct some of the uh, wording around the officer discussion to reflect um, the request that was made. And Jenna, your name was spelled incorrectly in the February minutes? Yeah, but in the top part, there's an L in call, call field. Got it. Okay. Thank you. All right. And I move second and approve those changes as well, Melissa. Okay. All right. Uh, getting right down to it. We have our, hey, Melissa Marquis is here. Hello, Melissa. Long Good time morning, all. It's been a, like a, a, feels like eight years since I've been able to actually participate. So I apologize has, for uh, have, my tardiness. Have you recovered in that time from dealing with us? So that's what I know. Yeah, you know, some days we feel like we're we're on the way, and others it doesn't. <laughs> so, All right. Well, hopefully right it's on the upcoming for you. So please. It is, uh, yeah. Um, so um, I'll just give you a quick update here. So obviously, you guys know that we're uh, still continuing the downward trend in cases. Um, every week, we're excuse me, doing a little bit better. Uh, so we're certainly very grateful for that. Um, so Omicron seems to be obviously settling down. Um, there's obviously been some news, um, you know, of this either stealth variant um, of Omicron. Um, it's termed, it's basically a, a, a sub variant of Omicron. Um, there's very few cases reported in the state, uh, but uh, there are some cases, excuse me, popping up nationally. Um, it, this is the particular variant that if you guys are following the news in China, you'll, you'll see that they're uh, actually experiencing a very large outbreak um, currently, and it's due to that. However, their circumstances are uh, very, very different from ours um, in terms of how they uh, sort of just completely shut their um, their states and you know the provinces down due to these outbreaks. Uh, their vaccination status looks very different from ours, so we're not very concerned at this point that we would mirror that same sort of trend. Uh, but we are monitoring and obviously watching what's happening there and some you know little uh, upticks in Europe as well. Um, so currently we're not too concerned. Um, we do have a lot of immunity. We've got high vaccination rates, um, obviously in Connecticut. So 
um, all of that is good news. Um, and then there's there's also been some news about this Delta Cron, which is sort of a, a another mix of the Delta variant and Omicron variant uh, together. And again, really very few numbers have reported. I think uh, maybe ten um, within either 10 or 30, I can't re recall right now, uh, within the U.S., so really small numbers. Um, so again, just something to, to watch, uh, but, you know, not alarming currently. Um, and so obviously still working with school districts. Um, we're holding one more um, school-age vaccination booster clinic um, next week. Uh, I believe it's the 23rd, uh, so I think that's a Wednesday, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So that'll be... Um, right now our last clinic that we've got scheduled. Uh, and so um, it's also for anybody that did not get a chance to get vaccinated with the primary series. So maybe those kids that were out of the original age group when we started our pediatric vaccinations, so they were able to take advantage of it this time around. So I think we've got probably about 40 or so kids um, maybe scheduled for their uh, second dose um, or their booster dose uh, for next week. So uh, looking good there. Um, and, you know, in terms of, you know, the rest, I think, you know, we're, we're finally able to start getting back to, uh, elements of what our jobs actually were prior to COVID, uh, which feels weird and nice all at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, trying to remember what we were doing and what we were working on before, uh, COVID hit. So, um, we are starting to actually go through the after action process, uh, collecting data, um, documentation, and we're going to be doing some um, hot wash um, sort of debrief sessions with our staff um, here in the next uh, several months to kind of talk through everything and identify areas where we need to improve, areas where we've identified strengths um, or best practices, things like that. Uh, so that's going to take, you know, the, the development of those documents will be, you know, more long term, but um, mm -hmm. certainly would love uh, any input that you all have. Um, if you've got anything um, that was striking to you, um, please feel free to reach out to me and let, let us know. Um, and certainly I just want to uh, thank you all for, for your help uh, over the, these last couple of years. You know, we've had some really great partnerships with our towns um, and Simsbury is obviously no different. So, uh, you know, certainly thank the um, Farmington Valley VNA for all their support uh, with nurses and everything. Um, certainly was uh, extremely helpful. Um, so yeah, thanks. Any questions? I appreciate that update and again the thanks certainly goes back to you and, and your entire team i think uh, i think i speak on behalf of everybody here with um you guys have been nothing but heroic through all of this in terms of the hours uh the information um and keep you know keeping us all uh, informed so that this team in particular can can execute and do their job so thank you thank you any questions for melissa all right my friend we appreciate you being here you're welcome to stay, but don't feel obligated to. We, uh, I am very used to people dodging out of meetings uh, after their line item is done. So, uh, Melissa, the moment you've been waiting for for your entire career, the town manager. <laughs> oh, good morning, everyone. Um, okay. I know uh, the town manager normally provides a brief COVID update um, at this meeting, and we just had a good update from Melissa, so I will keep it brief. Um, but we are currently at yellow status of the state's um, municipal COVID alert system. So that's very good news because that's a decrease um, in the severity we had seen um, for some time now. Um, in terms of vaccination status of our residents, 81.55% um, of our residents are fully vaccinated now. And um, in terms of booster doses, we have 51.73% of the population who have received an additional dose. Uh, we do continue to uh, post information on both uh, testing sites in the area as well as vaccination sites in the area on our website. So if you go to our homepage, there's a link um, right there on sort of the scrolling page um, that we keep updated um, as soon as that information is released. So we do continue to provide that information. Other than that, that's, that's it. Appreciate that's brevity. Um, and thank you for that update. Any questions for Melissa Appleby? Very quick update on the budget side. I know uh, many of you were with us into the nearly wee hours of the next day, and I appreciate you hanging in there. Uh, the Board of Selectmen has passed um, the town portion of the operating budget and has passed the capital portion, um, as you veterans all know. Um, but for the public at home, that now goes on to the Board of Finance for approval. 
some key items of interest uh, for this group. Um, as during that February meeting, we did talk about staffing levels at the police department. Uh, we did forward um, one uh, civilian position and two uh, certified officer positions uh, as part of that budget. Um, for those keeping track at home, that means that there's the potential to have three officers on the road as a result of that, because we do have a, um, a uniformed officer right now managing the CALEA position. So Chief, keep me on the rails here if, if I'm misspeaking, but um, our intent was to get uh, the police department three officers um, back into the patrol uh, traffic and, and other schedule. Um, I know that still leaves an additional three from the request. Um, we did also forward on a, a uh, staffing study. Uh, why are we doing that? We, uh, we have often looked at uh, long-term plans with uh, our, our facilities, um, with our schools, um, with Parks and Rec, and we believe that it was appropriate to, to do the same with our police department. Um, as we go forward um, so that we can continue to make, um, you know, informed decisions about the needs and staffing of, of the police department and, and help the chief and the police commission um, obviously uh, continue to do an outstanding job and we have no doubt they will. So chief, I don't know if you want to add anything from there. Um, yeah. So it, it just, uh, it, it does put more uh, three more certified or sworn positions into um, uh, the general mix. Um, it, it's not three though, it's four more that, so that we're really asking for is-, is Yeah, uh, you're right, I'm mistaken. Yeah, yeah but, but either way that, that transition, especially with that accreditation specialist gets us much closer to uh, where we would like to be. And I certainly appreciate um, you know, all the support, uh, especially from this group um, and members in this group, but also um, the thoughts and the discussions that have happened over the last um, two or so meetings during the, uh, Board of Selectmen meetings. I appreciate that. And our, our first selectman, Wendy Maxtudis, is here. And, and again, Wendy uh, brought the idea forward to um, go forward uh, with an additional officer. So the town manager had uh, two service improvements, one for the Kalia specialist and one for an additional uh, sworn officer. And uh, Wendy brought to the table the, the idea of a second officer. So Wendy, appreciate your partnership on that. Thanks. Thanks for uh, all the board support. I just want to throw that out there too. Absolutely. Um, we are also, and again, Chief, keep me honest, there's a service slash um, therapy slash um, one of those um, dog coming for the police department as well, and the required um, equipment uh, to outfit and keep that, uh, that animal safe uh, and to, to have a proper stipend and care for, for that animal. Uh, as well. So uh, assuming that all goes through with, with the funding request, the police department will also have that uh, ability to further interact with the community. Um, and I think in an important and meaningful way as was articulated during our meetings. So. Yes. Yeah. Very, very, uh, very well said. Uh, very, again, healthy conversations about that. And I appreciate all the, all the support on that. And I know that we are uh, certainly looking forward to this, but I think many people in the community who have heard about this are really looking forward to it as well. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, so those were the budget highlights, I think, for the group here. But for Melissa and Melissa, we are still waiting for the final numbers um, for the Farmington Valley Health District so that we can provide the additional um, contribution um, as a result of, of the last few years. So the board um, remembers and, and is aware of that. So. Um, but we are continuing to fund uh, the Farmington Valley Health District and our other partner agencies um, at prior levels um, or at our required uh, per capita numbers. So with that, we will move on to emergency preparedness. Michael Berry. Morning, everyone. <clears throat> if anybody's been uh, lucky enough to be outside the last couple of days, uh, obviously you can see that the weather is starting to turn. So hopefully we have survived another winter without any uh, uh, major catastrophes or, or uh, heartaches or headaches. Um, the weather service this year did predict more ice storms than snowstorms, and that did seem to come to fruition. So I think that's something that we can unfortunately look towards the, the future, that we're going to have more situations where we're going to have that rain, snow, sleet, ice line right around our area. Uh, so we can see more situations where we have to watch the weather more closely and we're not going to have the big 
heavy snowfalls that we've had in the past. However, we're going to have the, the wet snow and the, and the ice. Uh, Saturday was a good example of uh, what can happen with that, where it just went back and forth, back and forth several times. Uh, luckily, we got through that okay. Uh, with that, I've been working with the with Eversource very well. Uh, they've been very proactive in getting a community representative to me uh, before these storms happen, and we uh, remain in contact with them. Uh, we monitor through their website the outages, and then any communication or any problems are immediately communicated between myself and Eversource. And uh, we've had very, very good communication with that. So uh, very happy with how, how this winter went with that. And we look forward to working very closely with them in the future. Uh, recently, they sent me their plan for this year for the tree trimming. And uh, they are going to be doing some extensive tree trimming uh, to get the trees off the wires in uh, quite a bit of uh, area in town. And I'll try to get that to the uh, to the group once I figure out how to scan an 11 by 17 into my computer, which doesn't really work that well here. So I'll have to find a, a printer that'll be able to get that uh, get that taken care of. Um, now that the state is starting to get workers back into the offices, we're trying to get the emergency management performance grants from the last couple of years squared away. Um, and uh, we're trying to get those back uh, a couple of years back. We're trying to get those uh, taken care of. Um, so we're still awaiting some reimbursement for the last couple of years, but we're moving forward on them and I've been working with the state representatives to get that done. Um, we are in process with our emergency operations plan review and uh, this spring we'll be concentrating on the sheltering plan. Uh, we're going to be going over it because there is a lot of new players. Uh, Chief Baldus has made uh, uh, mention of this before, but there are quite a few new players. Uh, involved with this, and we're going to make sure that everybody's in, involved there, have their say in the plan. We're going to do probably a walkthrough of uh, one or two of the shelters that we have, to make sure that everybody knows what the layouts are going to be. And if there's any alterations to the plan, we'll make sure that those get in there before the 2022 revision of the emergency operations plan is sent to the state. Um, with that, the, the COVID numbers uh, you heard from Melissa have been going down very nicely. They have been providing a report for us, which I've been sending out in our incident operation, uh, the plan that I've been sending out each week. And uh, with that, the pods that the state has been distributing, distributing equipment has ended. So hopefully we are well stocked and we will not need those uh, pods or distributions in the near future. And the last thing I have is March 26th uh, is going to be a big day. Um, one of the features we have is, I'm sure the Chief, uh, Chief Baldus will mention it, uh, we have a hockey tournament in Hartford. Uh, Simsbury will be playing in that tournament, and also New Britain will be playing in that tournament. And since I didn't qualify and play on the, the major team for Simsbury, I'm playing on the minor league team for New Britain. So everybody come on out to the Civic Center. Watch the guns uh, versus hoses, or the battle of the badges, as it's called now, and uh, watch some great hockey all afternoon. And then you, for one ticket, you get uh, all of the uh, charity games, and then you get the Wolfpack game that night. So come on out, watch some good hockey, and if you want to see me fall on my face, <laughs> I'll be there. Well, I sincerely hope you do not fall on your face, but that sounds like a fun afternoon. So appreciate you you letting us know about that. Yep, it's pretty much a guarantee. So. <laughs> Any questions for Mike? All right, I appreciate that. And I do agree. Um, I think it's great that um, that we do drill and, and have a refresh on the uh, on the shelter plan is, yes, there are, as I look around this meeting and, and the boards, there's a lot of new faces. So um, that's one that we uh, we obviously don't want to exercise, uh, but sadly we know we, we do from time to time. And, and I know this team does an excellent job with that. So appreciate it. Questions for Mike, updates? Chief Bolter, please. Uh, good morning. Um, so, uh, Sean, thank you for uh, sort of launching that conversation about uh, the future additions to the police department and, and the improvements there. And just want to recap that again and thank everybody uh, that's part of this group. And there are some people who really did a lot of a lot of work. Um, but I wanted to, to specifically recognize members of the police commission just for their diligence and um, their their constant persistence in. Uh, then the support of the town manager's office, and then ultimately the uh, support of the board of selectmen, just to help to recognize the need for staffing levels and for a slightly different preparation model for the future. So just want to thank everybody again. 
Um, and then moving on to um, just one small item that I wanted to report. Uh, as you know, Mark Rudowitz had retired back in uh, February, and we are still in the process of finding a replacement for him. It's been a, somewhat of a slow process and not as a result of a lack of interest because we actually had a lot of applications, but just as far as getting, getting through all that. Um, but I wanted to let everybody know that the uh, animal control services are still being provided right now 24-7 um, as they were in the past. So in the past, when an animal control officer was not available, uh, then our patrol it would fall to our patrol function. So that would be primarily evenings, uh, overnight, and on weekends or when he was on vacation. Um, the one aspect of what we are missing right now is just the uh, nuisance wildlife aspect. And as you are probably familiar with, Mark had a license to be able to handle nuisance wildlife. Um, so we're not able to handle that to the same level that he is, and that's as far as like trapping and relocating, but we will handle all emergencies. And we do have, thanks to Mark, a great network of uh, animal control officers and those who can assist us with nuisance wildlife outside of that. Um, there are other things that happen throughout the year that uh, it's very important for us to have a dedicated animal control officer. And one is the survey that we do annually. Um, Mark would go around to a certain number of residences every single year and look to see if they had uh, dogs licensed and if those dogs were uh, vaccinated for rabies. Um, forward thinking uh, as Mark was, he did all this prior to him leaving. So, so we're going through a period right now where we're hoping to get somebody up and running within the next uh, two months before that cycle then starts again. Uh, but otherwise that's all I have to uh, report. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Any questions for the chief? Just a reminder for our friends at home, it is bear season again. We've uh, had some neighborhood bears on David Drive recently. Chief, thank you to you and the officers for helping my neighbors out. Uh, so let's lock up our garages and, uh, and our trash folks. All right, moving on to ambulance. Karen Stewart, good morning. Good morning, everybody. How is everybody doing today? A soggy, foggy morning. Um, I actually don't have a whole lot to report, but I do want to give you the uh, numbers that Sean, you'd asked for in terms of our uh, call volume and our response times. Um, you'd have kind of asked for it on a quarterly basis, but since we're not really through a quarter, I'm going to give you the last three months. Hopefully that will work. Um, so our call volume actually dropped off significantly for the month of February. Um, we went from 216 uh, calls in December, 212 calls in January, and down to 151 calls in February, um, which is a huge change. Um, I'm not quite sure what to attribute that to, although we did see that same decline in calls last year. So there's something about uh, the change in the weather. I'm not sure what to attribute that to. Um, that also reduced our transports, which went from 131 in, in December to 123 in January, down to 101 in February, which as we discussed in the previous meeting is a huge financial change in what Simsbury Ambulance is gonna be able to bill for and therefore uh, use for income and to pay for our employees. So um, unfortunate for us, but fortunate for the public. <laughs> So it's good in some ways and bad in others. Um, I will say our response times have been pretty consistent. Um, we've been averaging about uh, seven minutes and 23 seconds in December, 20 um, in January, uh, seven minutes and five seconds in January, and a little over eight minutes in February, which were attributed to a couple of, oh, not a couple, but probably about a half a dozen calls that were involved in a um psychiatric related calls, which requires us to respond to the call, but to stage for at least six to seven minutes before we're actually able to enter the scene, which was when it's recorded on our um, PCR times adds several minutes to our response time because it's meant for a safety issue. So it skews the numbers a little bit. So that difference between the, the seven minutes in January and eight minutes in February is really negligible in terms of uh, our actual response times. And I appreciate that context because those are the things that that myself and you know folks that are outside the the public safety community might not be aware of. So, appreciate oh, absolutely, that. yeah. So we have to we have to report in terms of uh, when we respond, and then the fact there's there's actually a 
a tab on our, our PCRs where we have a staging time. Mm -hmm. And I'm able to look at that and to get, get those anomalies and separate those out in terms of why it took longer to respond. But it was purely for a safety issue more than anything else. So, and I've confirmed that and been able to uh, confirm those. Um, the good thing is we actually have a, have seen the decrease, just like Farmington Valley reported and Mike Berry reported, decrease in COVID calls, which is great. So um, uh, hopefully we're going to keep that curve going that direction and um, um, not putting our guard down yet. But uh, I think so. I think we're hopefully going to be moving in the right direction. So okay. those, that's the data I had to report. If anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer that. And just a confirmation, we still have the second ambulance running for the 7-7 the seven to seven schedule? We do. We do at this point. So appreciate that, Karen. Thank you. Absolutely. Any other questions for Karen? All right. Appreciate you being here. Uh, Chief Baldus Fire. Good morning. Uh, I'll actually have Patrick do his report first so I don't forget him as I typically tend to do. <laughs> Patrick, go ahead. Patrick, we don't forget you. So go ahead. <laughs> That's it. I put a big screen up and everything. Happy St. Patrick's Day to all. Um, really quick from our office, uh, public gathering permits are actually starting to come back in. So people are getting out and about. Um, our new process that we uh, kind of sidelined as the group uh, is, is working well so far. So I'm looking promising for having safe events out there uh, throughout the year. Uh, also, we're starting to see some of our construction projects uh, down at the Ridge at Talcott Mountain uh, coming to completion. That'll The last apartment building in that complex uh, will be going online this week people moving in. And I believe there's only six townhomes left uh, to be built out on that uh, parcel. Um, so that's good news. Um, also, just something to, to report on a little bit, we'll be working with the local gas stations in the community, uh, being with the rise of the gas prices and whatnot throughout the country. Um, we're noticing that people are starting to stockpile gasoline, um, also putting it into unapproved containers, transporting it in large quantities, using illegal transport vessels um, to move this around. And in fact, I just saw in the news, California and Florida are actually starting to see theft of fuel coming out of the tanks. They'll actually park a vehicle underneath a tank. They have a trap door. They'll cut off the lock and put a siphon pump down into the tank and actually pump it right into a container and drive away with several hundreds gallons of fuel. So working with them, uh, we're going to put out a public safety notice throughout the town, um, gas stations and whatnot saying, uh, you know, what containers are allowed and what's, you know, basically legal through the Connecticut Fire Prevention Code and to keep an eye on it for us and let us know if they see anything uh, out of the ordinary. So we can work with, uh, you know, Chief Bolter and his department to uh, hopefully not have a, a problem out there in the community. Um, other than that, that's all I have to report. Appreciate that. Thank you, Patrick. Good reminder for all of us. All right, Chief Baldus. Thanks, thanks, Patrick. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, some uh, pretty exciting times uh, uh, here at the uh, fire department, and not so much because of uh, emergencies, but because of delivery of two new vehicles. Uh, we just received uh, two weeks ago delivery of a new pumper, uh, which replaces a 20-year, 28-year-old uh, pumper that has served us well uh, for those 28 years here in Simsbury. <laughs> Uh, that pumper's on the line serving out of the main station, uh, number engine eight. And uh, you've probably seen that uh, around town a little bit more now because of uh, some driver training and, and uh, familiarization, but that is on the line as a uh, primary response piece uh, right here out of the main station. Uh, the second delivery was one that we talked about some time ago. Uh, was is, It's called a Quint. Uh, that was delivered this past week. Um, actually, it's one year later than we had originally expected that uh, piece to arrive. Uh, that was certainly that was due to uh, COVID issues and supply chain problems. Uh, but this this particular piece is a little bit of a different uh, uh, piece in terms of its design. It's a combination of a ladder and a pumper. Uh, that's that's uh, why we have the name of Quint. And it's Quint Five. It's actually going to be located down in the Weetog Station. Uh, which will serve obviously the uh, the area that has been certainly developed uh, most recently with the number of uh, apartments, uh, high rises and so forth. And uh, having this combination pumper ladder uh, will serve that area very, very well. Now this actually replaces two pieces, uh, one a 30 year old ladder truck, uh, which actually has been off the line for almost the past year uh, because of a motor failure. It was subject for replacement anyway. Uh, and then also a 25-year-old pumper, 
Uh, we decided when those were coming up for replacement that it was uh, going to be prudent for us to look at this combination piece. Uh, it's, it's a way to save a little bit of money, um, but also provides us the ability of having more flexibility with, with that combination piece. So that right now is going through the training process. It's not yet on the line, but I'm sure you'll be seeing it uh, driving around town through the training process. Uh, and again, that'll be uh, down at our WeTalk station as Quint number five. And uh, we're uh, very anxious to get that on the line. It should be uh, before the month is, is over. Uh, beyond that, uh, the fire district is working on its budget. Uh, we have a, uh, a budget workshop that is, that is planned for next Wednesday at 6 p.m. here at the fire district offices. It's open to the public if anybody is interested in, uh, in coming. Uh, we don't anticipate any major changes. Uh, we will probably be flat in our in our mill rate for the upcoming year. Uh, no anticipated increases. And uh, so that seems to be coming together pretty well. Uh, Patrick had uh, had noted uh, on the public gathering permits that are coming up and just wanted to uh, make one note. Uh, the duck race looks like it's going to be back uh, for Tooten Hill School, which is, which is great. Uh, all we, we are always a little bit more concerned about, you know, that, that public safety aspect of many more people uh, congregating around the river. And we'll certainly work uh, closely with that group to make sure that they have in place, you know, proper, you know, public protection for uh, people that, that may be hanging around the edges of the river, especially now with the new uh, park that's down there. I think, just, you know, it obviously provides more access, but also potentially provides more opportunity for a slip and fall and maybe fall in. So we'll work on that very closely. Um, I think Mike did a great job with his uh, commercial uh, announcement on the Battle of the Badges down in uh, in Hartford on the 26th. So I'll leave it at that. But uh, we're certainly looking forward to, to support uh, those efforts between uh, New Britain and Simsbury, uh, which we'll be involved in. And then uh, the one other thing or a couple of things I just want to make note of, uh, we had an incident, uh, actually we posted it on Facebook, uh, to where this is a perfect example of smoke detectors doing the job. And then that was an electrical fire that was in an outlet, uh, it was a dryer uh, outlet that started. Uh, the homeowners uh, were alerted, uh, it was three o'clock in the morning by the smoke detector that was uh, located right near that uh, washer dryer unit. Uh, so the, uh, the, the extent of, of damage, the extent of, of the issues was, was very much limited, but certainly uh, you know, played an important role in alerting that family who was sleeping uh, of that issue. And, and this is the time of year with our clock changes that we certainly uh, uh, want to make sure that our people are checking smoke detectors for not only just operation, but also for battery changes as well. Uh, we also, uh, since our last meeting, had another issue where an observant neighbor just taking a walk uh, was um, noted some, some unusual smoke coming from behind the house. Uh, alerted the uh, uh, to 911, uh, the fire department, and we responded to a, a fire that was actually just starting in a wood stove area uh, of a home that was not occupied at the time. The residents had gone out shopping. So here again, uh, an alert neighbor, you know, basically making that phone call uh, very effectively and helped us to get that fire quickly under control and to minimize the amount of damage uh, that that uh, concern that that occurred. So again, you know, we're really, really pleased and, and great that we have a great community who is always uh, watchful and uh, certainly helping us to report those incidences. And lastly, uh, with the um, with the springtime here, I think we're hopefully we're going to see an early uh, yard cleaning season uh, with, with maybe no more snow. Uh, but this is also not the time to start burning brush. Uh, as you know, we do, we do not uh, allow open burning in the town of Simsbury. And uh, so burning of brush, leaf collections, sticks, and that type of thing is, is prohibited. Uh, you know, we, we do know a number of people enjoy getting out and having a little bit of a campfire, that type of thing. And, and we ask you to please uh, submit for a permit through the fire marshal's office. But uh, there are, you know, there are rules and regulations in regards to uh, open burning and it is not allowed here in Simsbury. So with that, have a safe spring. Good reminder, Chief. Thank you. And also good outcomes there. All right, uh, Neil Sullivan, Board of Ed. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, I can definitely report the same kind of positive news related to our uh, ongoing efforts with the fight against COVID. So um, as we finally entered our mask optional period in the Simsbury Public Schools, 
Um, I would report that probably about 10 to 15 percent of the student population chooses to uh, continue to mask and maybe a little bit higher than that on the staff side of, of things. Um, but that's kind of where we settled in after a few weeks of um, mask optional and obviously a number of our other procedures um, related to quarantining and self-testing are um, in place now. I did want to throw out pro probably to you, Melissa Appleby, or um, the, the state gave us so many self-tests that we are really uh, sitting on thousands that um, you know, we've already get, distributed them to all of our families. There, there's, so if there is another organization in town that could use some self-tests, we'd be happy to um, get them to you and redistribute because they do have an expiration date on them of this summer. Um, and I'd rather get them into people's hands over the next few months rather than see them go to waste. So I did want to put that out there. Appreciate that, Neil. And we can definitely get the, you know, the emergency management team back together and talk about, um, you know, strategies for how to make use of them. Because yeah. we certainly don't want them to go to waste, but understand that we were all sort of in a rush to get them, you know, back in January and what do we do with the leftovers? So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then, uh, other than that, I would note that the um, design plans for Latimer Lane uh, continue. Um, actually, there will be a focus at next week's design meeting specifically on school security. So we'll look forward to that from a public safety standpoint. Um, and as some of the departments talked about um, their budget processes, I would note that um, our budget um, has also been presented to the um, Board of Finance and will be um, heading toward the hearing and, and hopefully a referendum. Um, our emphasis, if you've been following our process, for uh, is on a lot of mental health needs of students. And so you'll all sort of new positions related to school social workers and psychologists and things like that. So we're we're pretty pleased that the budget can support those. And I would say that that it's an, a really important um, strategic initiative for the school system. So um, that's what I wanted to get out there for now. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Neil. Appreciate that. Any questions for Neil? Coincidentally, Neil, in the uh, uninformed no data ask him household, the number of Stomach bugs and sneezes and cough went up almost directly with the removal of masks. I don't know yes. if it had anything to do with it, but it's uh, it's funny how that works. Yeah, so. we, we we did have a higher absence rate over the last few days, so you're yep. you're exactly on point on that. So all the little kindergarten and first grade and elementary school bugs are back. <sighs> it was a nice two year reprieve from all those delights of life, but here we are. All right, um, we are moving right along. Tom Roy, Public Works and Engineering is what I should say now, so. Well, thank you and good morning, everybody. Um, I guess kind of to recap and, and touch on a few things that were already uh, brought up. Um, following up on Mike Berry's winter recap, I can't agree more that we're seeing different storms in the last few years. Um, it was not the most intense winter we've ever had, but the number of ice storms um, certainly has increased. Um, huge challenge for our staff. We're really good at snow removal. Ice just becomes so dangerous so quickly. Uh, we end up throwing a lot more salt at it, which is certainly more expensive. And we, we still have very long plow routes. Um, the number of drivers we have versus the miles of road is really a skew to our neighbors. Um, a lot of our similar municipalities, each driver would be responsible for 10 miles of road, where most of our drivers are responsible for 13 miles of road. So the fact that we're able to keep our roads in good condition really is a testament to the effort that the staff puts in. Um, additionally, Mike, on the tree trimming, we work very closely with Eversource on that, and we have that mapping, and we normally put it up on the public works page. Um, so we can certainly share that with you. Um, we meet with them just to make sure one of the critical things for us is that any tree trimming is noticed. 
so that nobody comes home to find out a tree that was in their front yard that perhaps they they had you know a long history with perhaps it was planted by a family member isn't removed without notice and it's a big part of what we do in our office um on the nuisance wildlife that the chief brought up on our website we also have a list of nuisance wildlife vendors um, so if anybody does have that unusual circumstance where they wake up to find a dead raccoon or something in their backyard it's an option to have somebody who's licensed and qualified to remove it or if something um un unfriendly is in your basement we've had issues with snakes and things there are people that you can call if uh, animal control wasn't available um test kits we have a similar problem i'm glad neil brought that up we also have an abundance of n95 masks if anybody needs any um still giving them away for the low low price of free um, and then um, just in terms of some initiatives that we've been working on during the winter, um, you may or may not have noticed, but we've put up um, or we've increased the amount of roadside reflectors that we have around town, just the small reflectors on some of our darker roads. Um, we've put reflectors on all of our guide rail throughout town. It doesn't jump out at you in, unless you're driving on a foggy day like we've had recently or at night. And um, additionally, we've done a lot to pick up some of our icy spots that we've had over the years. We've been doing some minor drainage improvements. And all of this is really to try to help make our roadways a little bit safer. So with that, that's all we got from Public Works today. Appreciate that, Tom. Any questions for Tom? All right, we'll keep chugging along. Uh, Kristen Formanek, Social Services. We've had a busy week and a half. Hi. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Um, I also have good news to share um, regarding the budget process. Similar to what you've heard um, already spoken about, we're also seeing an increase in mental health issues in the community, um, particularly involving our youth. Um, so we have also asked for a new community social worker to focus on working with family and our youth. And um, we are grateful to the town manager's office for supporting that and for the Board of Selectmen for approving that. And hopefully it will move forward at Board of Finance. Um, and program wise, we are really excited in the senior center to let everybody know that our seniors are back in the building for their Tuesday cafe meal and Wednesday hot lunch. Um, we've been out of the building serving that curbside for two years. So it's really nice to have everybody back in the building. Um, and in social services, we're wrapping up energy assistance. We'll soon be starting um, French's rebate, and we are going to be um, doing a few spring activities for our kiddos in the community. Um, so hopefully, you know, coming out of COVID, we're all going to continue to do well. We also have a lot of um, the KN95 masks left and some test kits. So if anybody needs them, you can uh, let us know as well. And we um, be happy to participate in the conversation of, around what we can do with those items so that they don't go to waste. Um, and that's all I have and happy to take any questions. Thank you. Kristen, appreciate that. Thank you. Any questions for Kristen? All right, uh, Nancy Sheets, VNA. Uh, good morning, everybody. Luckily, I have very little to say. Um, you know, even the patients that typically we get post hospitalization for COVID, they've decreased. Um, I am messaging some of you, uh, you know, we are required no matter what uh, the health is at the moment now, that because we've all learned a lot uh, in the past two years, we have to have a certain percentage of stockpile. Uh, Medicare and Medicaid kind of require us. We even have to have an offsite storage area so that in the event of God forbid an emergency here or a flood in my basement, um, that PPE stuff doesn't get destroyed. So um, yeah, we would be happy to have some of that stuff. Luckily, we don't have too many uh, COVID tests um, sitting around. I hate the fact that they do expire. Um, but all is good in the VNA world. Excellent. Appreciate that, Nancy. And I see the note. So yeah, it sounds like we're getting some folks connected here on the uh on the need for trading PPE. So thank you for that. Any questions for Nancy? All right, uh, Sarah Nielsen uh, has a conflict this morning. So we are going to table uh, the cell phone service update. I know that she and many others have been working hard on that, uh, but she asked that that be tabled this morning. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, and we'll move to Mark Massaro. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, thanks. Um, I, I mean, Eversource is, mentioned quite a few times this morning, which 
thankfully they were all in a positive light, so I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll be happy about that. Um, but one of the things that, you know, I, I just want to piggyback on some of the things that, that Mike mentioned. Um, yes, there is quite a bit of trimming planned for this year in town, and um, it does equate to about 50% of the outages that happen in town uh, you know, over the last several years. That's right around the number all related to 50% related to tree uh, limbs and so forth. So, you know, that's a big effort for us to, to maintain the four year cycle of trimming. And, and when we do find decaying uh, trees, we work with, you know, Tom's group to try to get them removed. That way they don't fall down and not necessarily only falling into our equipment, but also falling into the roadway or pedestrians and so forth. So it's, it's more than just the, the Eversource equipment that's of a concern. There's a public safety aspect to that too. Um, in terms of, you know, the relationship, you know, we have ongoing discussions, um, you know, as things do go on during the year, um, you know, upcoming um, emergency response plan meetings are going to be taking place in April for all of our uh, contacts for, you know, uh, first responders and, and public works, who I view as a first responder, um, you know, along with our crews that are out there during these events. So, um, in late April, we have two different um, web meetings that are going to be available, and I sent that out to those that I normally communicate with um, just a few days ago. So uh, please, if you're available, consider attending the day or evening session um, just to, to hear what we have you know, coming up in the, the new emergency response plan. Um, and then lastly, actually, one, two, two more items quickly. Um, the municipal hub, um, I, I can say that it, look, it seems like uh, dispatchers have been using it quite a bit to report block roads during storm events and using it for you know various means. So I can see those that are logged in and, and the last time that they've used it. So it's being used. I would you know encourage them that if they've signed up to, to take a look in there if, you know and just refresh their memory if they haven't been in in a bit. Um, and it's also available to fire uh, and, and police uh, leadership as well to take a look if they want to see what's happening during storm events. If you haven't been trained, let me know. I'm happy to come out and do that and get you get you logged in. Um, and then lastly, just to piggyback on, on Kristen's mention of energy assistance, um, you know, we're winding down towards the end of our traditional winter protection period for, for those that qualify for energy assistance. I would strongly encourage um, customers to contact our customer care group there are many programs available, forgiveness plans, energy assistance plans. Do what you can to minimize, you know, the impact on your bill, and then also to take advantage of all the different programs we have available to uh, to assist as we come into this next uh, season coming up. That's what I have. Mark, I appreciate that, and all the efforts to stay connected to our community. It's uh, it is appreciated. Any questions for Mark? All right, uh, so we have uh, Commissioner Caulfield and Commissioner Wong here from the Police Commission. Any updates uh, from your perspective? Mike or Jenna? Mike, you're on mute. Oh. Thank you. I'd just like to uh, thank everybody who was uh, a part of our effort to, uh, to support the, the police department and, and the increases that uh, uh, in service uh, capability that we uh, we're looking for and, and thank you to the first selectman for taking up the, the cudgels on that and being a, a leader for public safety and uh, just uh, in, in you sean for your participation in that as well just like to thank everybody for jumping on board and, and making that happen thank you you're welcome i just want to second what mike said we appreciate your support so thank you you're welcome we uh Again, I think you guys did a did a really nice job of, again of working with uh, working with the chief, uh, working with the town manager's office, and and overall, I think uh, I think we came to a good starting point here, and uh, I don't view it as an end. Um, I think you know Wendy and I have talked about that this is a, a, an important step, and that um, you know we need to continue to to appropriately fund all departments, obviously police uh, first and foremost. Um, to continue to make sure that we have the community police department engagement that, that we all expect and enjoy in this town. So. Appreciate that uh, that partnership. Um, it was a good discussion. So, anything else for the good of the order this morning, Wendy? Anything from your perspective before we close it out? 
for letting me join. Of course. It, uh, you are the boss, so any meeting, you are more than welcome to join, my friend.